Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'd like to look at TIS 100. TIS 100 is billed as the assembly language game, which nobody asked for. Uh, it's by Zaktronics, who are, of course, best known for Space Chem and Infinifactory, and also Infiniminer, the game that inspired Minecraft. Now, this is all about assembly language. If you don't know, assembly language is kind of like one step removed from the actual machine code that runs on a computer. When a computer is running code, it has an instruction, and the instruction is typically take this byte of memory and copy it to that byte of memory, or take this byte of memory and add it to whatever's in this register. And I say byte, it could be a word, it could be an integer, it could be a long word. There's many, many different functions. This system the for the game is a little more interesting than your run-of-the-mill computer. What you have is these discrete compute nodes, right? Each of these has a little bit of space for running instructions. It has a register which you can use to perform mathematics. You have like a backup register which you can you know, back up the contents of this. And then it has communication channels in multiple directions. Now, the task here for this second uh, second problem is to read a value from input A, double that value, and write the value to output A. So input A is here, output A is here. And the way that this simple program works is you move whatever is up from here into the accumulator here. Then you add the accumulator to whatever's in the accumulator. So the, that means you, you double the value in here. And then you finally move the accumulator right, so it goes here. And this one is sitting here just waiting for something to appear on the left. And as soon as it sees it, it moves it down. Similarly, this one here is waiting for something to appear up, so it just moves it down, and this one moves it down, and then it runs out. So you have this checklist here of values that you should be producing here. So you have input in A will be... 11 and the first output it should see is 22 so you can step it through the program or you can run it you can see this happening the numbers are getting checked here you could pause it you can step through the values you see so 34 is here I'm going to move it into the register you see and then I'm going to add the contents to itself 35 68 whatever and Bingo, this all gets copied. You have all these, like, writes and stuff for debugging. Now, another thing you have are these communication failures nodes. Continues to baffle. Chatted with Bernie at IBM, he says it sounds like something they'd come up with in the USSR. But then, why is the manual in English? Oh, yes, the manual. Let's take a look at that. Yes, the manual is a PDF document that looks like a bunch of kind of photocopied... Uh, bits and pieces, even has highlighted sections. The tessellated intelligence system is an ideal for applications requiring complex data stream processing, such as automated financial trading, bulk data collection, and civilian behavioral analysis, right? I mean, this is... The, the implication is this is some sort of super-secret government hardware that the your uncle acquired at some point. And, uh, you know, there's a story in here, Right? So if you scroll down far enough, you get to the basic execution node. It tells you the the registers that it has. It has an internal nil register. These are the communication ports left, right, up, and down. Any, when any is used as a source of an instruction, the instruction will read the first value that becomes available on any port. That's a useful one. Last, last refers to the port last read or written by the any pseudo port. So these are like communication channels you can use, but these are the actual instructions here. So you have NOP, which does nothing, move, which moves stuff, swap, save, add, sub, you know, negate, right? Uh, interesting factoid that some early computers, they didn't have add, they did have subtract. And the reason is, if you want to add two numbers, what you do is you take the first number and subtract it from zero. And then you subtract that from the other number and you end up adding two numbers. So it means you only need to uh, implement subtract as an instruction code. And there was quite a few computers did that. Like, you know, we're talking like universal, university research stuff. And then, of course, you have jump functions that are ju that perform execution transfers based upon what's in the accumulator register. I say, it just says ACC, I'm presuming that means accumulator. 
And they even have jump based upon whatever value you read. So you can write switch. You could write all sorts of crazy things with this. Uh, and then you also have a stack memory node, which I haven't unlocked in any of the ones that I've done. To do, figure out who sold the TS-100 to swap meat dealer, rebuild signal multiplex, or look for book of micro-optimization tips, and renew license plate tabs. Okay. So, <laughs> there's a bunch of uh, other information here. Anyway, back to the game. I'm just going to finish this out here. Run, you see, this is just matching. It gives you all these scores to tell you how well you've done, right? Now, if I return to the segment list, I actually have a second version. Note that this one took 160 cycles. It required four instruction nodes and six instructions, right? But this other one did it twice as fast. It did it in 84 cycles, but it used an extra node and it used almost twice as many instructions. And how did I do it? Well, this one, the first node as it comes in, it moves, it moves one to the right. The second one, it moves down. Then these perform the calculation and subsequently they both push the data out here, push it down and out it comes. So basically I've parallelized this just a little and this is just you know, a very simple tool. I'm sure you could parallelize this more if you were really trying to figure out what you were doing. I guess this one could come down and then it could spread it multiple directions and we could make things super, super fast if that was what we were going for. Anyway, I'm coming back out to uh, the segment list. There's a few other bits and pieces here we can look at. Okay, so interrupt handler. It says I read from input one through input four. So that's these four options up the top. Then I write the input number when the value goes from zero to one. Two interrupts will never change in the say input cycle. Okay, I think what I'm doing here is writing to output. Okay, so looking at the numbers, this is what we have, is we have all zeros in the first cycle. Second cycle, the first input goes from zero to one. And so I write one for input one. On the second cycle, this one remains as one, and then this one goes from zero to one. This is input four, so we write a four. But note, on the next cycle, this one goes back to zero, so we just write zero, right? So it's only when the things are coming in. This one goes to three, this one goes to three, okay. So I think, okay, okay, I know what I'm going to do here. Let's uh, just take a look at the story here. My sister was over for the holidays, I think, I think to check in on me, make sure I haven't gone off the deep end. I, something caused more, some worry. Her kid saw me working here and suggested I could surf the web for TIS 100 specs. So even kids are on about internet, online, blah, blah, blah. It's a racket. I don't care about the information superhighway, and I never will. Okay, so while reading that, I think I formulated what I'm doing. Since uh, only one thing will change at any one time, all I, what I can do is write out like a one here, a two here, a three here, a four here, and then just have these things add all the numbers together because these will be, say, say if this one switches, it'll be a four coming out here, and then we'll just add zero, 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 and we'll get the output here. So this is my kind of lazy way of doing it. So the first thing I need to do, we need a start label here. So we're going to use some logic here. Now, if this is zero, Right, this is what we want. Okay, so if we're going to go to jump, if it's not zero to um, set, right, we'll call this set. So this is a, a thing, we'll set this here. So this is just a label. If the accumulator, which will contain the previous value, is set, then go to this section, right? And if it's already set, then all I do is I move the up, up value into accumulator. And that's fine. I guess I'm going to jump to start, right? Start. Okay, next one. Uh, if, so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to move whatever the new value is in from up into accumulator. I'm holding the shift key because everything's in uppercase, but I don't need to do this. This is really kind of unusual. Okay, so we're going to take the value from up and move it down here. And you know what? The set doesn't need to be set there. Okay. So we move that in here. And the next test should be uh, 
so this should be zero and now if it is j okay jump zero if it is zero then uh, j e zero so if it's already equal to zero we just jump to start right otherwise we're going to move the value one down and then jump to start so that's an unconditional jump to start. I don't even need this jump to start here because we're we're that's an extra instruction we don't need. Okay, so that's my code, and what I can do is copy this to the other four nodes here. Except I'm going to change the value so that these things pop out the correct uh, in input channel. So these things are all like message passing interfaces or something going on here. Okay, so what we're going to do is copy everything over to this middle one and then let it add everything up. Okay, so move up to the right and we're going to move up. Well, I guess I can do this calculation in parallel up to right. Can I do this? I'm just wondering. Yeah, I can do this actually. So move at left. So I'm moving the left input to the right output. And then I'll do the accumulation here. So move up to the left. And now this is where we're actually going to do the calculation. So first thing we do is we move the upward value into the accumulator. Then we're going to add uh, left add the left value, then add the right value. Okay, I think this is going to work. Move up, down. Oh yeah, and of course we need to, once we've done this, we now need to move the accumulator down. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm just going to run through this. Oh, 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 okay, so we've had some bad values. For some reason, we're getting 10 out here. I think my logic is fundamentally flawed here. So let's just step through this. So everything is zero. So we jump to, nope. Now we move up into the accumulator. So that's zero. And if the jump is equal to zero, we jump to start. Oh, but you know what? Before we do this, we have to output zero. We haven't got our code to output zero. Okay, so jump equal to zero. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, so this is where we'll finish up here. We'll do um, zero, as will be the last row here, and you'll move the value zero down, right? So instead of jumping when equal to zero, we're going to jump to zero. E R O. Okay, I'm just going to copy that whole thing again. Just replace it. It'll be faster doing it this way. See, I missed a very important part of the instruction and my code didn't work. Because I hadn't actually thought it through. This is what happens when you try to code stuff in real time. So, I mean, you know, this is not the most visually stunning game. But it does seem to be kind of interesting. Okay. Yes, look, now we're getting the same value, the correct value in the output, so I can run this. Oh, yes, you see? It's like magic now. Of course, the real question will be, how well do I perform in the face of uh, other players? And, well, in terms of my cycle count, I'm in the middle of this big peak. I could probably figure out a way to save some cycles, but... The number of instructions I use is pretty good. It's close to the minimum here. And the, the node count is pretty much at the number. Somebody managed to do it in six nodes. One wonder. I guess I guess they uh, moved everything sideways or something. I, I'm sure there's a way they, they could minimize that. But yeah, this is, uh, this is TIS 100. It's a really interesting game, but it's clearly not for everyone, right? <laughs> If you think you have skills with assembly language, then this is completely different from any processor you've ever worked on, right? Certainly the instruction set is very, very small. Some of these things get really complicated here. What's the signal multiplier? Let's take a look at it. Read values from input A and B, multiply the values, and write the product out. So you've got to multiply them. 
let's just re think for a moment. We don't actually have a multiply instruction. You have an add instruction. We have these stack memory nodes where you can push values in here and read values out. So maybe there's a way to use these. I haven't thought it through. I mean, the, the way you do multiplication when you don't have a multiplication is you basically add the value to itself n times. Although there's, there's ways to accelerate even that if you know what you're doing. Anyway, yeah, the game is TIS 100. It is a very niche item on Early Access Steam by Zachtronics. I, if you're a nerd that likes puzzle games, if you liked Infinifactory, if you liked Space Chem, then this may just be the game for you. If not, that's okay, because this these games make me want to punch my monitor sometimes when they're so difficult. <laughs> I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Fly safe.